definitely been mesmerized by some seriously cool preloaders in my day. Those little animations can be so captivating. They really have the power to set the tone and leave a lasting impression as a website loads. Preloaders are essentially loading indicators that show up before the main content of a website or app is fully loaded. They are a great way to keep your users engaged and let them know that something awesome is on the way. Today, we are going to explore two amazing preloader designs you can use to create engaging loading experiences. Once you learn the tricks, you will be able to customize them for any project. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use this beautiful template called Brahms Portfolio. I got this from the Framers uh, Template Marketplace. And it's an amazing template. Like, even if you want to learn about different animation and you want to break down the concepts of how to animate such things, you can easily, you know, uh, download this template and figure out and break the template down to understand how it's made, which I think is a great way of learning. And this template also didn't have a preloader. So that's the best thing about it. So we can use this existing website to create a preloader. Now I've created a frame here by pressing F on my keyboard, switching the layers panel and pushing this frame inside the laptop stack, which is the main stack if you see. And let's call it the loader screen. Now this will be fixed on top. So let's just change the position type to fixed. And I'm also pinning it to the right and left by changing the values to zero. Now, once that's done, it occupies the entire space here. And to see how this looks, let's just play it. Now, the remix link is somehow visible and this is not occupying the viewport completely. So let's just change that. I'm going back to the loader screen again. And let's just change the height to viewport, 100% VH. So it occupies the entire viewport height. And I've also added a Z index of 10 because I want this to be on top of everything. So now we have this, it is completely responsive and it occupies the entire viewport. So this looks great. Going back to my loader screen, I'm going to create a component. So you can press Shift Command K or just right click and create a component. Now we don't need the other screens here. I'm just using the main laptop screen that we had created. And let's just call it the start screen. Now this is going to be our first screen of the loader animation. Now we're going to prepare the screen. Let's just remove the fill here. Because I'm going to create another frame inside of this primary start screen uh, frame that I have, the component that I have. And let's just pin it to all the sides and make it zero so that it occupies the entire space here. And this is going to be my background. Now this will have the color. Let's just rename this frame to PG color. That is the background color. Now with that, let's also give this a color. I'm going to go with black color here. And I'm also going to lock this frame because I don't want to accidentally keep selecting it all the time. This is just going to be the base here. So let's just lock it. Now inside of this, I'm going to create another frame by pressing F on my keyboard. And this frame is our content frame. And here we will put on the content. Again, this frame will be pinned to all the sides, 0, 0, 0. So it sets the entire space properly. Now let's just get rid of the color here. We don't need it. And then here, let's start putting in our content. I'm pressing T to activate text. And here I have written my first uh, letter, which is H. And uh, let's just resize it and format it slightly. That's a little more visible. I've changed the font size. I'm also changing the font and matching it with the rest of the pages. That is Instrument Sans and making this bold. So once this is ready, I'm going to select the letter H. And let's just uh, put this into a stack. Next, I'm going to change the width to fit and height to fit as well. Let's just select the stack and place it right here. Now, I'm going to hit Command D to duplicate the stack and write my next letter, that is E. Now, I'm going to keep repeating this process of duplicating the stacks and writing the letters until I have my whole word. Now, why do I have all the letters in individual stacks and not together is because I want to animate each of these letters separately. That's the reason I'm putting one letter in each stack. Now that I have the entire word here, I'm going to select the stack with letter H and changing the position type to absolute. The moment I do that, it has definitely, it's not following any rules of fit, fitting the width and height. So we have to change that to fixed. 
And once we do that, we can still adjust the, you know, the width of the stack. But why are we doing this? Why are we like putting this into an absolute position? Because if it is set to relative, we won't be able to move the letter, which we want to do in order to create this type of effect. So for that, what we can do is there's a small trick uh, that you can do. That is duplicate this letter H. Just change the position type for that to relative. When you do that, the stack, for the stack, you'll have the option to change it to fit content. So let's just select the stack here and change the width to fit content. So we don't have to manually adjust the width here. And I'm also changing the color of relative H to red and the absolute H I'm moving it down. The function of the relative H is to be able to maintain the stack properties. Now I'm selecting the main stack here again and changing the overflow settings to hidden. So we don't see anything that's outside the stack. And I'm selecting this relative H that we have duplicated. That's in color red. We've changed the opacity to zero because we don't need to see this edge. And the one that is going to animate is going to animate like this. So now you can easily move it down and move it up without changing the properties of this stack, which keeps it in its place. Now we're going to repeat the process for the other letters. But before, let's just rename the stack to H and I'm going to move on to my next letter that was O. Now, again, duplicating this letter O in here, selecting one of the, uh, you know, layers, I'm going to change the position type to absolute and use my arrow keys to push it down. I can also pin it to the bottom and add a value of minus 110 if I want to keep it uniform across. Moving on to my relative O, I'm going to change the opacity to uh, zero again. I'm going to keep following the same steps that I did for my first stack of letter H and repeat it for all the letters. So I'm just speeding up the process. I'm just duplicating the letter and setting one to absolute, the other to relative. And for the relative positioning, I'm changing the opacity to zero. So basically that's the crux of it. And once done, I'm going to select all these letters and put them in a single stack. Now let's just adjust the gap here. I'm changing that from 10 to maybe um, 4 pixels and also changing the width from relative 100%. Let's just make it fit content. Now I'm going to select the stack right here and place it in the center just like that. Now it's time for us to reposition our elements for our first screen. Selecting the letter H, I'm going to push it down. If you see it's minus 110 pixels pinned on the bottom. For the letter E, uh, make sure that you selected the one that's set to absolute, not the letter one. So setting the absolute one and pinning it to the top. Instead, so it's minus, in, uh, minus 110 at the top. And repeating this process uh, by positioning the letters up and down alternatively. So once that is done, this is our first screen that is set up. Now for the second screen, in the second scene that we have, I want the letters to be visible. So what I'll do is select the letter H again and press option uh, V and option H to position it back in the center. Once that is done, I'm going to repeat that for the remaining letters as well. Select the one that's been pushed up or pushed down, the letter that's set to absolute, and press option H and option V to bring it back to the center. So once that is done for the entire uh, word that you have, this is what your second scene is going to look like. I'm going to rename this to mid screen because this is the screen in the middle. The next screen that we have is our end screen where we want the entire word to disappear again letter by letter. So once we have named the screen, let's just go back to our layers panel. In here, I am going to select the alternate letters and change the position and from the bottom pin to minus 110. And for the remaining two, I'm going to change it at the top pin minus 110. So once that's done, we have basically designed our end screen as well. But that's not it. We also have to remove the background here. We don't want the black background anymore. We want that to disappear. So I'm removing the lock from here and let's just pull this up like that. But one problem with this technique is we won't be able to make it responsive. In order to make it responsive, we will have to define the viewport height. To do that, let's just go to the main frame here from the layers panel 
Select the background color layer here. Remove the lock and change the height to viewport 100%. Let's just adjust the viewport height here. And once that is done, let's come back to our end screen and change the viewport height of the background color layer from 100 pH to 1. And I'm also changing the position from the top pin and making it minus 30. So it's completely out of the frame. I'm also selecting these letters and changing the opacity here slightly in the mid screen just to add that effect. And once done, now it's time for us to connect all the screens. Let's just keep it up here and add a delay of maybe around 0 0.6. And from mid screen to end screen again, I'm going to keep the interaction on up here. And delay we can have somewhere around 0 0.10. Now, this will end at the end screen, so we don't want end screen connecting back to the mid screen, so let's just remove that. It sort of automatically connects. I'm also changing the transition from spring to ace for both the uh, screens here. And once that's done, it's time for us to play this and have a look. I'm just selecting this, and this is what it looks right now. When I think this is sort of not working, there's some issue here, so let's just go back and check what's wrong. So it's not moving from mid screen to end screen because in the mid screen, you also have a click interaction somehow. So this kind of happens, so don't worry about it a lot. Just ensure all your transitions are correct by just rechecking. And once that is done, this is what it looks like. It looks great. I'm just going to replay it and have a look. I like the way all the letters appear. However, I'm not a huge fan of less opacity, so I'm just going to bring that thing up. And once that's done, let's just replay this again. So yeah, this looks pretty cool. Now let's do it on the actual screen. And yeah, this looks cool. However, we can always adjust the pure effects here because we want to match it to the preloader timings. So I'm just updating the delay here to 1.8 seconds. So it appears after the preloader animation is done. Just like that. I'm going to reload it and show it to you. So yeah, this looks pretty cool and slick, right? So it was pretty simple to do. It probably took us 10 minutes to make this. It was a pretty simple animation, but you can use the same tricks to create any animation you want. And as you can see, it has already made it responsive. So it works for the tablet. It also works for the phone because we made the viewport height 100%. Now I want to show you something here. When you play this animation, when you scroll down, none of it I can select. There's no hover state happening for any of the cards below. That's because we have our loader screen component on top, on top of all the layers, which is preventing us from selecting or interacting with the layers at the bottom. Let's just set the loader screen component, go to styles and pointer events and change that to none. Once we have done that, we'll reload the page and see that now we can easily, you know, hover over the cards, even select and interact with the page. So yeah, you can keep these little things in mind and ensure that your preloader is working absolutely fine. Moving on, I'm going to show you another amazing preloader designs that you can easily create for your website. I'm using the same framer template and I'm also using the same component. I've basically duplicated the file but I have removed all the previous stacks to create a new design. Entering the component canvas again, I have the same content frame and the BG color frame that I had created previously. Now, inside of our content frame, let us just write the first word. So I'm pressing T to activate the text and I'm writing in the first word, which is not visible right now. So let's just change the color here. I'm going to change that to white. Update the font to instrument sans and uh, the weight to bold. Let us just also make it really big in size. So I'm just uh, pushing this up to 106. And now we have our first text ready. I'm going to duplicate this by hitting Command B and type in my new word that is world. So this says hello world. Next, we have to create that image changing effect in the center. To do that, I'm going to press F on my keyboard and create a frame just like this. Let us just resize this and place it in the center and see how this looks. And yeah, once you're happy with the sizing, you can assign it a proper number too. Next, I am going to create another frame here and update the fill by going to plugins and splash. And I'm just selecting a random image here. 
Let's just place it right in the center. I'm going to call the parent same as image stack and I'm going to turn that into a layout. Setting the image inside of image stack and I'm changing the width and height to fill so it occupies the entire space properly. Now this looks great. The next step in here is to create that image revealing effect. To do that, I'm going to select this image stack and put it aside. I'm going to create another frame here. So let's press F on the keyboard. And once that's done, we're going to rename this to image mask because this is going to mask the image. And next, we need to select this image mask frame that we just created and assign a width and height to this. I'm going to make the width 40 and height 80 pixels. Now this small rectangle that we have in here, we're going to create two more frames inside of this image mask. To create that door opening sort of an effect, let's just select this and give it a different fill so it's easily differentiable. I'm going to keep the width to 20 and height will be 80 pixels. Next, I'm selecting the main frame and turning on the layout to make it into a stack. I'm going to duplicate the smaller uh, rectangle we just created and let's just change the position to absolute. I'm going to give it a different color so that it's easily differentiable. And the first one that we have is still set to uh, relative, so we can't just move it freely. So I'm going to change the position type to absolute for that as well. And let's just pin it to the left, making it zero from the left. And for this one, let's just pin it to the right. So now it is, uh, you know, it's dividing the main frame into two and Inside of the image mask, we need to take our image stack. So let's just place it right here in the center. And we're going to uh, place it inside the main image mask stack that we have. Now at this step, please ensure what all layers we have in what order. And let's just rename this to left frame and the one that's below. Let's just name that to right frame. So these two will, you know, uh, open up so that the image is uh, revealed at the back. I'm going to select the image mask here and change the overflow settings to hidden. So the image in the background is hidden now. Next, I'm going to select the left and the right frame and update the color and match it to the background so it's not visible. Now let's just select all these main elements that we have here on the screen and put them in a single stack, just like that. I'm going to update the width here and make it fit content and the height is already fit content so that's okay and let's just rename the stack to title so once that's done I'm going to position it in the center just like that next I am selecting the word hello putting it into a frame and turning on stack I'm doing the same for the world putting it inside the frame for that you can easily just add the frame and turn on the layer now with this, our first screen is set. It's time for us to create the second variant. Let's just click on this add button. Now inside of a second variant, we want to sort of start revealing the image. For that, let's just set the image mask and adjust the width, just like that. So you see the two frames, since they were positioned to the right and left, they'd move with the border on the image mask and reveal the image in the center. So let's add a variant three. And inside of variant 3, we need to adjust the height of the image mask. So selecting the right layer from the layers panel and adjusting the height just like that. As much as we want to reveal it, we'll do that. So with that, we have step by step defined in each frame how we want the image to reveal. So the next steps in the process are pretty simple. All you have to do is keep creating new scenes uh, and update the images. I'm just selecting the new variant for that I've created. Going to image mask, going to the image stack, selecting the image. And let's just update the image by going to plugin, selecting another random image from Unsplash. And like that, let's just keep duplicating till we have around, you know, four to five different images all updated. Now this process is pretty simple and uh, self-explanatory, so I'll just uh, sort of sped this process up. So you can watch me quickly do it. And once you have created almost seven to eight variants, it's time for us to see how we'll handle the last screen, how the things will disappear. So let's just select the first two words here, and I'm just going to increase the gap in the stack so it sort of disappears out of the screen. And I'm going to select the image mask here and reduce the opacity. Just like that. Once done, let's just change the background's viewport height to 1, like how we did earlier. 
and again set the position uh, minus 50 on top so it's completely out of the frame. Now once that is done, it's time for us to connect every variant that we have made. So to do that, I'm going to select the first variant right here, connect it to the second variant. Let's just set the interaction on up here and delay can be 0.5 seconds. Similarly, I'm going to connect the rest of the variants following the same up here and delay of 0.5 seconds. And once you're done, just ensure there are no other click interactions that happened while doing this. In case there are, just get rid of that and ensure you just have up here and delay set to 0.5. I'm also going to select this hello text that we have and add an up here effect. Preset is fade in. And on enter, I want to change the values on Y axis. Let's just, you know, uh, increase that to maybe 130. And I'm also uh, bringing down the opacity here. I'm going to repeat it for the world text as well and the pure effect. And once done, let's just view it. So this is what it looks like. And I think it looks great, but let's just view it on the actual screen. So going back to my homepage and this is what it looks like. And okay, but I want to sort of adjust a few things here. So going back to the confident canvas, I am going to the end screen here. And I don't want this to sort of, uh, you know, disappear like this. So I'm reducing the gap to zero and I'm going to select the hello and the world text and change the opacity. And I'm going to bring it down to zero because I want it to sort of disappear. Then I'm selecting the main stack here and pushing it out of the screen. To do that, I'm changing the position of the top pin to minus 900. So it's completely out of the screen. So once that's done, let's just view it again. And this is how it looks. I think it looks pretty cool. Next, we can update the pure effect timings here, like we did for the previous preloader animation as well. Just update the delay settings to match it perfectly uh, with when the preloader animation finishes and this one appears. So yeah, this looks great and it was pretty easy to make, right? You just need to progressively design each state of the animation, how you want it to work. And yeah, this is how we created our first animation and the second preloaded animation. Well, I hope you found this helpful and you will try and recreate this. And well, if not this, you can always create something like this, which is very commonly seen, you know, like different uh, salutations or something like this, which is pretty simple. It's just different text on different frames. It's easier than what we just made. So yeah, give this a shot. Thank you so much for watching. Do subscribe to the channel if you like our content. I'll see you next week.